In the first game of the NIT semifinals Monday night, Virginia's all-time leading scorer, Brian Stiff, displayed his many skills. Outside, inside, rebounding, running, and passing. Stiff had 27 points and a career-high 15 rebounds to lead the Cavaliers to a six-point win over Florida. In the other semifinal, Notre Dame's LaFonso Ellis muscled the Irish to a 14-point lead over Utah. But the Utes regrouped, and Phil Dixon's three-pointer with 33 seconds remaining gave Utah a one-point lead. Notre Dame again went to Ellis, but a questionable foul call against Utah sent coach Rick Majerus into a rage. The technical followed, as did four Irish points from the line to give Notre Dame the win. Tonight, Virginia and Notre Dame battle for the NIT championship. to Madison Square Garden in New York for the championship game of the 55th annual NIT as the Virginia Cavaliers take on the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Sean McDonough. It's great to have you with us as Virginia goes for its second NIT championship. The Cavaliers won this event back in 1980. This is the third trip to the championship game of the NIT for Notre Dame. They've never won it. These two teams met earlier this season. They are familiar with each other. It was back on January 18th at University Hall in Charlottesville, Virginia. The Cavaliers red hot throughout. They shot a season high, 64% as a team from the floor. Brian Stiff at 19. Freshman forward junior Burrow added 11. And Corey Alexander with seven of 11 from the floor had 22 points as Virginia slashed and shredded the Irish defense for a 27 point victory. I'm joined by Bill Raftery, coach. It is a different Notre Dame team than that one that played at Virginia two months ago. I'd say the adjustment period is over for John McLeod and his club. I just think they've done a great job defensively. They've been more aggressive. They've worked hard in practice. But during this tournament, just sensational, as you see the field goal percentage, approximately an average of 35%, which is extraordinary. They've done 45% for the year. The Irish got off to a 1-5 and five start. They are 17-9 and nine since then. LaFonso Ellis says the key is adjusting to the new system of John McLeod with patience. I think the four seniors collectively were like, it has to turn around sooner or later. It can't be this bad the whole year. And everyone, we were very patient. Everyone kept working hard and it's paying big dividends right now. The Fighting Irish come into this one with a record of 18 and 14. When we come back, we'll take a look at the Virginia Cavaliers. It's the NIT championship game from Madison Square Garden in New York. As a free American citizen, justice is your right. Unfortunately, many of today's accident victims feel they do not get justice from the insurance companies. During times of crisis, Hutchins & Hutchins will help protect your first and foremost right. Justice from the insurance company. When accident or tragedy strikes your family, tip the scales of justice in your favor. Call Hutchins & Hutchins, attorneys helping injured people recover, because you deserve justice. It's Richmond Braves Baseball, and box seat season tickets are on sale now. That's tickets to all home games, including the AAA All-Star Game in Richmond July 15th. And you can win use of the Braves Superbox for a game. Pick up a registration form at any Ucrop supermarket. While you're at Ucrops, look for these ticket drive sponsors. Real Gold Citrus Punch, Angel Soft Toilet Tissue, Lowry's Season Salt, and Steak of Microwavable Sandwiches to Go. Opening day is April 9th, and season tickets are on sale now. Call 359-4444. I've been watching Brian Stiff since he was a freshman. He's a driver, a shooter, a passer, a post-up player, a team player, a great offensive rebounder, which is what he was when he came in, a tremendous offensive rebounder. Brian Stiff is a, is a great player. Sean McDonough, high praise from a man who's been in the NBA for 18 seasons. He knows some talent. Brian Stiff leads the Virginia Cavaliers, averaging 20 points per game, but before tonight's game, Coach Jeff Jones says if the Cavaliers are to be successful, he'll need help. 
we are at our best when Bryant doesn't have to carry the whole load. And uh, oftentimes this year he's had to do just that. But if we can get uh, Anthony and Junior or uh, any two or three other of our players scoring and contributing at the offensive end, it takes an awful lot of pressure off of Bryant and makes us a much more efficient offensive team. Bill, who do you think might step it up for Virginia tonight? I have a feeling it might be Junior Burrow. He's going to have to contribute offensively, but also defensively. I think they're going to have to coordinate help one another out on Ellis. And Ted Jeffries, he'll have the main responsibility well, guarding Ellis. But they're going to play a little one-man zone off him. The Virginia Cavaliers have won four in a row for the first time this season. They bring a record of 19 and 13 into this one. Virginia and Notre Dame for the NIT championship right after this. These days, there aren't many things you can be sure of, but one you can is Jack will be back. Jack Nicholas will be back at the Tradition Senior PGA Tour Tournament at Desert Mountain, and he'll be trying to win his third consecutive tradition against one of the strongest fields in senior golf. Watch for it on ESPN April 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and 5th. It'll be a great four days of golf. The Tradition, presented on ESPN by Golf Illustrated. Costly engine wear occurs when you first start your car because even the best motor oils and additives are down in the oil pan. Slick 50 protects your engine at startup. It treats the engine, not the oil. Independent lab tests showed Slick 50 reduced engine wear by 50% 50 for 50,000 miles. Since 1978, over 15 million people worldwide have used Slick 50. Starting your engine without it is a terrible thing to do. You may have heard that you can't afford this much car. We're happy to announce you can. Right now, there's a Mercedes-Benz special leasing program on our incomparable 300 class. So why not join the people who've put themselves into some very special cars for very special monthly payments? It makes a test drive worth your time and a Mercedes-Benz well worth the difference. Being light is key when you run. You gotta be lightweight. So I wear the pump graphite. Me too. This arch design gives me lots of support with major weight reduction. Weight reduction? Big advantage. That's why I'm not wearing socks. That's why I'm gonna shave my head. Fine, I'll clip my toenails. I'll swab my ears. I'll floss my teeth. I'll pluck my eyebrows. Uh, um... To be settled in Barcelona. I wonder how much an appendix weighs. <laughs> ESPN's College Basketball is brought to you by Reebok, who reminds you that life is short. Play hard. By smooth Bush beer and easy drinking Bush Light. And by Pizza Hut, home of the $7.99 Supreme Pizza Deal. Welcome back to Madison Square Garden for the championship game of the 55th Annual oh, National oh. Invitation Tournament. Sean McDonough and Bill Raftery. Here's the Reebok starting lineup for the Cavaliers of Virginia. We feature Anthony Oliver, one of two seniors, along with Brian Stith in the starting lineup. He's an excellent defender and played well in the first game against Notre Dame. No for the D, but if he could help with the jump shot, it'd certainly help Virginia. And now the Reebok starting lineup for the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Elmer Bennett is their point guard. Runs the show, gets everybody involved, solid with the basketball. John McLeod, the winningest first-year coach in Notre Dame basketball history. He became the winningest first-year coach with the win in the semifinals over Utah. 18 wins in his first season, surpassing Elmer Ripley, who won 17 in his first season of 45-46. Jeff Jones also looking to make history tonight. A win would be the 20th of the season for Virginia, and that would make Jeff Jones the first coach in ACC history to win 20 games in each of his first two seasons. Impressive, huh? Especially when you think about all the great coaches that have been in that league. Notre Dame dressed in white. Virginia in orange. And we're ready to go. Bob Bennett to throw the ball in the air. Tom Lopes and Art McDonald. 
Working with him as the three officials, and it's Notre Dame basketball to get things started. Virginia Miniman. Pressure on the ball, everybody looking to help. Damon Sweet is number 22, and this is Keith Tower. Bounced it off his foot. Uh, Jeffrey's starting out with Ellis, tough assignment. Burrow has to assist. And of course, Stiff, the key guy offensively, run a lot of bumps for him. Corey Alexander, the freshman point guard, guarded by Bennett. Oliver, too strong off the glass and rebounded by Ellis, who averages 11 rebounds a game. And Indy will try and get that quick basket, but Virginia very good at getting back and balancing the floor. No score, we've played 50 seconds. Here's the guy, you can see Burrow looking to jam up. Let Tower have it any deeper than 18 and look to help down low. 13 seconds on the shot clock, and Bennett has the first bucket of the night. Little pick and roll with a clear out in the back. Burrow oh. missed the jump. Rebounded by the freshman Billy Taylor. Taylor. Oh, the line. <laughs> missed the line. Looked like he's been walking somewhere around Times and Square. Yeah, at the A train. Oh, my goodness. Well, not enough eyes. <laughs> Corey Alexander has the first Virginia points of the night. We're tied at two. Both pretty basic in their defense. Notre Dame runs a lot of stuff on their half-court sets. A little screen down, a little dip in right here for Ellis. Damon Sweet, long from three-point range, stiff. Kept it alive for Oliver. And he got it to bounce in. You're right on the money, Sean. Nice play by Stiff. Almost an assist-type kick forward. Virginia four, Notre Dame two. 17.45 to play in the first half. Uh, Jeffrey's a little stronger than Ellis down low. The deep one, huh? Bennett uh, helps Ellis if he keeps stroking those. Three-pointer for Elmer Bennett. He has all five Notre Dame points. Burrow. Ellis and score. Incidentally, I saw McLeod checking your attire out. So that's the way they dress in this area anymore. Looking on with disdain. <laughs> Always sharp with the threads, wasn't he? Oh, it still is. Same play, only the slip by Tower. Screen, instead of staying, went down the lane. Brings the defender with him. Touchdown right out of the gate for Elmer Bennett. Seven points, 7-6 seven, Notre Dame as we pass the three-minute mark. Jeffrey, not much of an offensive threat, had it stripped by Sweet. It's a four-on-two break. Nice pass oh. to Taylor. They usually play pretty well here in New York, in the Irish. I don't know whether it's the Subway alumni. But there's some tradition that exists that they must perform. They played against UNC earlier this year. 2-0 in this building this year with the win over North Carolina in the regular season and the win against Utah in the semifinals Monday. This is the guy that's got to look for himself. Stiff, that is. Oliver missed the layup. Tower the rebound. Scouts looking at Ellis and Stitt. They're about that 12 to 15 number, according to most of them. Two excellent players, great character, and uh, if you can make that jump shot, uh, you'll be able to help the family out. Burrow. Oh. Alfonso oh. Ellis set a school record with eight block shots in the way of Kansas State. Oh. That's a three for Bryant Stiff. And the game is tied at nine. First points of the night for the senior from Freeman, Virginia. Now, you've seen Russell play when you were younger. That's the way he would block them. Keep it in play. Ignite a Celtic fast break. Little message with that block. Sweet. Short with it. Controlled by Anthony Oliver. Both clubs take away the easy break. Uh oh Say goodnight if he's drilling that one. Another three for Bryant Stiff. UVA's all-time leading scorer. 
now with 2,498 points in his career. And Jeffries with that strength able to bang Ellis out. Look at all the help. It's a stiff that time over. Burrow taking a sneak, sneaking a peek. Cavs have run off six straight points. They lead 12-9 with 14-45 to play in the first half. And Notre Dame settles the offense with 12 now left on the shot clock. Inside footwork. Excellent little nickel dimer by Alexander. Out deep. That was the first foul of the game. It comes 5-23 in here in New York. Dan won the decathlon at the World Track and Field Championships. Dave won the decathlon at the Goodwill Games. This summer, they'll battle it out in Barcelona for the title of world's greatest athlete. Mercedes-Benz automobiles represent decades of durability testing, leading edge technology, plus one reassurance you're unlikely to find in many other cars, seats actually designed to withstand the energy of a rear impact. That's just one of the many virtues that makes a test drive worth your time and a Mercedes-Benz well worth the difference. What does it take to be a mountain man? Man, do you need a big horse? Do you need a deep tan? Do you have to have a saddle? Do you have to have the gear? Well, the simple truth is you just gotta have the beer. Bush beer, an easy drinking bush light. Have you got what it takes to be a mountain man? What does it take to live a mountain man's life? Get smooth bush beer, is a drinking bush light. Right now at Pizza Hut, get a supreme pizza loaded with six delicious toppings like mouth-watering pepperoni and green peppers. Call Pizza Hut Delivery and get a medium supreme for $7.99 and any other medium for just four bucks more. Call now. Come on, Pizza Hut. Looking at the road travel to the NIT championship game by Virginia wins over Villanova, Tennessee, New Mexico, and Florida Monday night in the semifinals here at Madison Square Garden. Three home games before Notre Dame arrived in New York wins in South Bend over Western Michigan, Kansas State, and Manhattan. Defense the key in those three wins. Good defense again against Utah in that controversial. Semi-final win Monday night. Mm. Now, a lot of people complain that Notre Dame had home games, but you have to provide some funds to run this tournament, and, and they proved that they could draw it home, and somebody had to get hurt. Tough every year, but they're here. Elmer Bennett short. That's the first miss from three-point land for either team. Notre Dame now one for two from three-point range. And Virginia's two for two on a couple of threes by Bryant Stiff. Taylor got a hand on it, and Stiff stepped on the sideline. It will be Notre Dame ball. I think he listened to his coach, John McLeod, he, uh, in the tape at the beginning of the show. He talked about he can make the jumper pass, go low and post up, and excellent defense there, three-quartering, and denying the pass. Just past the six-minute mark of the first half, Virginia leading 12-9. Taylor. Wow. That is what it is. The Notre Dame coaches said this morning they were looking to look at the basket a bit more often. Step up a little. They played great D in the last trip for Virginia. That time, some nice little play they ran there. A lot of options, including a post up by Ellis. Taylor has four points now. He had only three Monday night against Utah. Nice. Taylor, again, good defense. Yeah. You like it. They're running a screen as well. It's not easy to slide by and regain proper position. No sign of championship game jitters, at least from a field goal percentage standpoint. Excellent unhurry, particularly this guy, huh? Stiff off the mark that time, rebounded by Ellis. The peel back. Taylor forced it up over Stiff. Jeffries knocked it to Cornell Parker, who's the first substitute of the game, number 33. Slapped away by Bennett, it deflected off Parker. It will be Notre Dame ball. Well, that was the Matador D, huh? The bailout slap away, Mexican D. And the third turnover by Virginia. It will be interesting to see if fatigue plays a factor tonight. Neither of these teams very deep. They did play on Monday night. Notre Dame gets almost all of its production from the starters. 
A couple of guys in the 30s, four of them in the 30s. Including LaFonso Ellis, who's played 90% of all the possible minutes of this Notre Dame season. Well, John isn't a success. Uh, falling asleep, got to keep him there. 36 minutes a game. A little lazy here by Tower. Get a hand on the shot by Jeffries. The Irish with the lob. Oh. LaFont's dominate. Well, he can run the floor. Extraordinary. Notre Dame answering a 6-0 Virginia run with a 6-0 run of its own. Burrow powers in for two. Four points for Junior Burrow, the freshman from Charlotte, North Carolina, out of Oak Hill Academy at Mouth of Wilson, Virginia. So when you get those open court opportunities, they're exciting for your team because Virginia doesn't give them up. Anytime you can get him, makes it easier on your half court set. Tower short with it, rebounded by Jeffries. That is the key to the game, according to Jeff Jones. Oh. They have to stop Notre Dame in transition. And Alexander doing a nice job, but not paying attention on that dribbling in the midcourt area. Ellis shut off by Jeffries. Tower. Off the mark from the foul line. Now the defense worked. Burrow stayed off to help out. A little gamble pass, and Ellis seen the ball. Again, Alexander threw a bad pass. It was intercepted. Got a foul on the drive. Count the bucket. A little NBA continuation. Well, gave Elmer the bucket. It looked like the whistle blew when he was right around the foul line. Well, what happened here? One official waved the goal off, and then the penetration, and again. Corey Alexander not into the game early and actually it ends up being a pretty good play you know once you make that move Hank Nichols had told us early in the year to the goal you know with the knee you hand the ball you do score the goal Bennett at the line looking for his 10th point And a timeout on the floor with Notre Dame leading 18-14. 11-08 to play in the first half. Good luck, Tommy. Dan won the decathlon at the World Track and Field Championships. Dave won the decathlon at the Goodwill Games. This summer, they'll battle it out in Barcelona for the title of world's greatest athlete. In pilot jargon, it's called a walk-around. You see them do it before every takeoff of every plane. What you don't see are their qualifications to fly those planes. It takes them years and thousands of hours of experience. And every year, they're schooled and tested. No exceptions. Because when you're a United pilot, you hold a lot more in your hands than just the controls. Come fly the airline that's united the world. Come fly the friendly skies. Not how much you pay that counts, but what you get for your money. This consumer tip was brought to you by Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. Notre Dame with a four-point lead as we take a look at our first replay of the night from the upper deck trading card camera. And up there in the Euchre seats is Lafonso to gather it, and what impresses me, and it's it's an obvious ability he possesses is to get down the floor. He was on the baseline when the play ignited, and he exploded. And the big guy, in or out, he's gonna earn a living playing this game. Virginia with three turnovers on its last four possessions. The Cavs have turned it over five times in all, leading to nine Notre Dame points. Junior Burrow scores over Ellis. Nice little fadeaway, something they've been looking for. And we mentioned the other night, you know, think of Ellis. This is really his first year since his freshman year because of the eligibility. Digger really never had him around. And 
I think his will on this team, because he is the senior, his aggressive nature has helped John get out of the gates. Malik Russell is checked into the game for Notre Dame. He has the ball now, number 21. And Joe Ross, number 53, is also on the floor for the Irish. Bennett for three. He is on fire. 13 points for Elmer Bennett in the first nine minutes plus. That's a little staggered double. You can see some of the half-court pro philosophy of McLeod coming out. Lazy right here by Ellis. The Burrow missed and it's rebounded by Ross, the sophomore from Wabash, Indiana. This is the largest lead for Notre Dame. Five points in 21-16. Russell has played some point guard for Coach McLeod this year. He's 6-7 out of Brooklyn. Tough assignment for Doug Smith. Bennett, they run some bumps for him. He's got good range and speed. Alfonso with six. The pressure on Jeffries because Ellis runs the floor so well. He's got to sprint back and then you relax occasionally in that low box area and he's posting up without any problem. Notre Dame on a 14 to 4 run. The lead up to seven. Burrow misses. Rebounded by Ross. back in the game but there hasn't been a stoppage in play damaging for Virginia right now what a very quick moving first half mm -hmm. we've had only two fouls to this point both called against Virginia Ellis uh -oh. starting to find it wow. eight points for the Futsal and how about now you got to hug him and he's gonna go by strong on a roll and that's what great players can do that's why they want Stith back in the game this should be Notre Dame ball. It is. It was batted away by Bennett, and it struck Burrow on the way out of bounds. But the whistle does give Jeff Jones a chance to get Stith back into the ball game. Corey Alexander has also returned. It's Alexander and Oliver in the backcourt. Stith, Burrow, and Jeffries in the front court. The starting lineup back intact for the Wahoos. And Notre Dame continues on this run. He's tough. I mean, Jeffries, even though he missed, Jeffries is afraid to come out and hug him because he knows he can bounce by him. Not an easy assignment for Ted. Coming up Friday night at 9 Eastern time, it's the NABC All-American game from Minneapolis, featuring, among others, Todd Day of Arkansas and Hubert Davis of North Carolina. That's Friday night at 9 from Minneapolis. And Timmy B, Jimmy V, and a lot of dunkies. They've got the slam dunk contest, I think, as well. Think Ellis is going to play it as Russell tag Stiff. And Bryant Stiff will go to the line. The foul against Malik Russell, his first. And the first foul called against Notre Dame. We've played 12 minutes and five seconds. Pretty good understanding of position defense mm -hmm. by them. And Jeff's problem offensively now. He addressed getting others involved, and Burrow made the little box move, but uh, this is the guy I think is going to have to have a big night to match Ellis. He had That's a big the... night against Florida on Monday night at 27 points as Yuri Barnes, a freshman, checks in for Virginia. Ted Jeffries gets a rest. And with those 27 points, Stith has now scored in double figures in 50 straight games, the longest current streak by any ACC player. Brian with eight tonight, and that cuts the Notre Dame lead to nine. Make it eight. It's Richmond Braves baseball, and box seat season tickets are on sale now. That's tickets to all home games, including the AAA All-Star Game in Richmond July 15th. And you could win use of the Braves Superbox for a game. Pick up a registration form at any Ucrops supermarket. And while you're at Ucrops, look for these Ticket Drive sponsors. Picked Sweet Frozen Vegetables, Evian Natural Spring Water, Texas Pete Chili No Beans, and Snapple Natural Beverages. Opening day is April 9th, and season tickets are on sale now. Call 359-4444. 
Billy Packer with the official car of the Final Four, the all-new Oldsmobile Achieva. Here's what $199 a month brings to the game. Anti-lock brakes, standard, driver-oriented cockpit, AM-FM cassette stereo. The critics agree. A Consumer's Digest Best Buy. It's smart, it's fun, it's Oldsmobile Achieva. And $199 a month drives it home. As with any Oldsmobile, if you don't like it, bring it back. Compare with anybody. The most car offered for $199. Your home court advantage is today at your Olds Virginia Network dealer. The week at ESPN's Fantasy Baseball Camp. It's the Babe Movie Contest. Call 1-900-737-1714. The call costs 99 cents a minute. To enter, correctly answer a question based on the movie The Babe. Or send name, address, phone number, and the name of the last team The Babe played for to this address. Winners selected by random drawing. Get a different trivia pack nightly on ESPN's Baseball Tonight. And watch for The Babe, starring John Goodman at a theater near you. Well, there's the executive director of the NIT, Jack Powers, and actually he's a lot better looking with the young lady <laughs> moving aside. And uh, Jack has taken an all-star team every year, which is a highlight for these kids. And this year, it's the Foot Locker, Locker All-Star Team with Luke Conaseca, the Hall of Famer. And interestingly enough, Jeff Jones played on this team years ago when P.J. Colosimo was the coach, and Mrs. Colosimo helped him pick out his engagement ring. He decided he was going to get married, and they went shopping. And uh, in Yugoslavia, he picked out his engagement ring. And I know he, PJ, he didn't help pay for the ring. No. So a nice little thing at the end of the, during the summer, they go to France, Germany, and Holland this year. And Jack, Jack, excuse me, will be the assistant coach to Lou, so they still will need an interpreter to understand <laughs> Mr. Conaseca. 15 on the shot clock. The Notre Dame lead is 7. We had a coming down rapidly just before the last reverse break. It is seven, and still seven is the rebound by Oliver of the Bennett miss. A rear miss for Elmer to this point. Alexander fouled. Elmer Bennett called for his first in just the second against Notre Dame with 7-10 to play in the first half. It's 25-18 Notre Dame. Both teams still shooting pretty well, and all 13 points in the backcourt for Notre Dame have come from Elmer Bennett. Turnover is a problem for Virginia. They've got to get shots, and that's the first positive thing on the offensive end. Corey Alexander has performed. So he's got to get in, create some things, and maybe the kick out passes for Stith. Corey had a career high nine assists Monday night in the semifinal win over Florida. With those nine, he set a freshman assist record at the University of Virginia, previously held by Jeff Jones. Mm. And Jeff played this NIT with a bad knee. He said it was easy. Just kick it up front to Ralph and things was going to work out. First time the pressure with the upper deck cam and effective. Junior Burrow with the steal. Trying to give it to Alexander. Jeff Jones said he didn't know that Corey Alexander was on the verge of breaking his freshman assist record <laughs> until Corey kept reminding him over the last couple of days. And he would have yanked him, huh? That's why yeah, no. Why didn't you take him out? Protect your record. A little banging. I think Cozen down underneath trying to pay attention to Stith. It's Carl Cozen just in for Notre Dame, a sophomore from Oak Lawn, Illinois. Notre Dame by five, 6.43 to play in the half. Cozen Bam Bam as Alexander deep. That went Bam Bam off the rim, mm. rebounded by Ellis. Well, that beats Clunk Clunk. Nice play. Huh? Stith face the ball, get up big. The lob was intended for Cozen. Stiff batted it away. Virginia climbing right back into it. Yuri Barnes over John Ross. Rebounded by Ross. One and done, huh? You know, it, when Digger was there, they were great. They used to lead the country in margin of defense, particularly the defensive end, but lead in margin of defense of rebounding, excuse me. And Notre Dame continues to just give you the one and check everybody out. On the floor now with John Ross, Ellis Bennett, and Cozen for Notre Dame. Ross off the mark, rebounded by Barnes. He threw it out off Ross. It will be Virginia ball. That actually went over the backboard. Jeff Jones was up, but they got the basketball, so he wasn't quite upset. A five-point lead for the Irish. Alexander better get it over the timeline. So with 36 seconds left on the 45 second clock. 
Burrow. Oh. <laughs> Has his own miss. And then he was fouled on the floor by John Ross, his first. You know, all the drills you watch and you say, gee, uh, sometimes when you're not coaching or playing, it's a rather disinteresting mm -hmm. to you. Well, that jump stop is a lot of work in practice and that aggressive nature, something that coaches develop. But Burrow, strong, a little harsh on the kiss, but aggressive going after it. Oh, sleep. And Stiff with the inbound feed from Alexander. Ten points for Stiff. That's 51 straight games in double figures. Some guys see it and can't get it done. He sees it and does it. Ellis missed the ball away over Barnes. Battle for the rebound. Ross. Will it count? Yes, it will. And he'll go to the line with a chance for a three-point play. And great for Notre Dame, but what a killer for Virginia. They forced the fade away, and now you've got a seal and rebound. And John, who they feel is the little better of the twins, in the right spot to attack and get himself an offensive rebound. But Barnes does a terrific job turning him away. They just see the slip inside. He just happens to be in the right spot. Ross short with the free throw, rebounded by Barnes. 27-22, Notre Dame, as we tick down to five minutes left in the first half. Barnes, surrounded by three members of the Fighting Irish. Not reversing the ball well, Stith had a chance on the other side. He's mistiming now as they, Cozy's doing a nice job on him. Not going to be easy for him. Alexander, the miss. The loose ball wound up in the hands of Damon Sweet. Oh, they're tough road schedule. They had no name. That's got to make you awfully tough. Mm -hmm. Tough minded. You showed Virginia doing a great job against them. And this is a different team. You mentioned earlier Notre Dame likes to run. Jeff Jones says they have to stop the transition. And to this point, for the most part, they have. But once they get in the half-court situation, Notre Dame is extremely patient. They, they do some stuff that I've seen John do with the Phoenix Suns mm -hmm. and the Knicks. I mean, nice screening, nice exchanging of positions, good ball reversal. And uh, if you recall, Jeff Jones was worried about them going from side to side. And that's what they've tried to do defensively. But uh, John's kids have done a nice job thus far. Jeff Jones won an NIT championship as a player in 1980. Trying to win one now as a coach. This is Corey Alexander. The Irish looked to trap for a moment. Now a whistle away from the ball, and it's Billy Taylor, a little bit too physical, with Brian Stith. First foul on Taylor. Little screen away, Sean. And when you can't get over the pick, you might as well grab him. He's going to put it in the goal. 3.56 to play in the first half. It's Notre Dame with a five point lead. This new S-Class is so many things. Space, strength, and safety, of course. But more than anything else, it's the performance that will astonish people. Because it's so quick, so agile. If you don't love driving this car, maybe you just don't like driving. Here, the days run long. Sometimes the job is all uphill, but you keep on going. And once you've made it all the way to the top, 
the mountains will take your breath away and remind you there's no place you'd rather be than right here, right now. In 1980, Terry Holland's Virginia Cavaliers faced Minnesota for the NIT championship. It was a matchmaker's dream with 7'2 freshman Randy Brewer of Minnesota scoring 12 against 7'4 freshman Ralph Sampson of Virginia who scored 15. Then guard, now Cavalier head coach Jeff Jones scored only two points, but had six assists as Virginia won the NIT title. Jeff was playing with an injury in that game. And injured leg and had six assists as I mentioned in just one turnover we talked about Corey Alexander breaking his freshman assist record but Jeff told Corey I had a much better assist to turnover <laughs> ratio than you did <laughs> and why not he just threw it up in the air didn't he <laughs> big Ralph got of course Minnesota had McCann mm -hmm. right Trent Tucker. Tucker if I'm not mistaken you are not mistaken oh as a matter of fact you are right sir another open shot Brian didn't knock it down ah! Taylor off the mark and a foul against LaFonso Ellis on the follow-up activity. The first against LaFonso. So after going more than 12 minutes without a foul, all of a sudden the Irish are in the bonus situation. They picked up seven in the last four minutes. And uh, they're not sure that they're shooting yet. Now they figure it out. Ted Jeffries apparently was poked in the eye. He has gone to the Cavalier bench. The junior from Bowie, Maryland, out of DeMatha High School and Fourth Union Military Academy. Hard worker. I mean, here's a kid that gives you effort every night out and takes a little bit of a shot and uh, hopefully will be fine. Looks pretty good on the sideline. Actually got it in the Adam's apple, it looks like. But has had to play some awfully big people and done exceedingly well. Cornell Parker who missed the front end of the one and one. Bennett off the mark, rebounded by Barnes, the freshman from Richmond. Okay, you're not going to take too many away from Erie once he puts his hands on it. UVA has missed its last six shots, make it seven. Barnes pushed off of the rebound. Good call by Tom Lopes, the outside official. First foul on Uri Barnes. Trying to change the D right now. Jeff signaling, see a little more full court pressure. Quick shot by Burrow. That's I'm sure not the one they wanted. Virginia ice cold. But Notre Dame hasn't really been able to take advantage and pull away. The Irish lead still five. They're under three minutes to play in the first half. Parker doing a nice job on Sweet. The couple inches Jeff pointed that out to us thought he could negate the jump shooting ability. Both clubs solid on this end, the defensive end of the floor. You see the shot clock down to 10. And it's passed too strong off the hands of Billy Taylor. And Alexander paid attention when he sat there for a few minutes. Don't let him turn the corner. Good job. Earlier tonight, Utah beat Florida in the third place game. We'll be speaking at halftime with Utah coach Rick Majerus and a couple of his players, Paul Afiaki and Jimmy Soto. Going to test that wide angle, huh? Mm-hmm. Barnes <laughs> off the mark, but tipped in by Burrow. And finally, a bucket for Virginia. Eight points tonight for Junior Burrow. And Ellis came out limping. It looks like he's going to be okay. Not getting easy shots, though, Virginia. You mentioned they've missed a number in a row, but it's good attention to business on the defensive end by John's players. And Ellis is going to limp off with a minute 58 left in the half. More spring training baseball action coming your way on ESPN tomorrow night at 7.30 when Cecil Fielder and the Detroit Tigers take on the Kansas City Royals, Wally Joyner's new club. That's tomorrow night at 7.30 here on ESPN. And the fielder of all scores, John Saunders, will be checking around the country for the next six months. Bennett, double team, but got it to Tower. And he knocks in the baseline jumper. Notre Dame back up by five with a minute 35 left of the half. Bennett went for the steal and missed. Alexander, nice pass. 
Smith had him blocked for the foul call. Is John Ross got a hand on the ball? And I don't think John thought it was a good call. The guys that follow Notre Dame were telling me when Lafonso is in there, Tower makes shots for some reason. Ellis out with his problem. Who who nails it? Keith Tower. Nice little cut. Set this up. Tower over trying to help out. Great look. Brian Stiff. First team all ACC this year for the third consecutive year. Only 17 players in ACC history have accomplished that. Sean, I don't know if Skip Meyer, the trainer, brought LaFonso Ellis into the, the locker room. I haven't seen him. Taylor. Virginia ball with a minute 14 left in the half. Alexander on the floor for Virginia with Jeffries, Burrow, Stiff, and Parker. Taylor's forcing Stiff out wider and wider, making him put it on the floor this time. Nice little play. Yeah, breakdown, but great job by Notre Dame. Keeping him away from the ball, but when he touches it, a distance. 13 tonight for Brian Stiff with his 27 Monday night. He became the all-time leading scorer in the history of Division I basketball in the state of Virginia. He passed Himbo Coles of Virginia Tech. An Olympian. Mm -hmm. Great name to go through life with, huh? Himbo Coles. <laughs> <laughs> About an eight second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. The shot clock now at 17. They try and make their penetration, go all the way, or find the kick out pass. Preference would be sweet deep. Taylor for three. Well, short. Long rebound out to Stiff. Plenty of time for Virginia. <laughs> momentum after a spectacular length of the floor rush and basket by Brian Stiff. Uh, Sean, there are nights when you wish you didn't show up and people expose the lingerie. This is one of them. Just unbelievable. The head and shoulder avoiding the charge and leaving the white shirts behind. Well, every time you watch him, he shows you a little something, Sean. Look at that. <laughs> You're afraid of the punishment of picking up the charge. Instead, you need a towel to get the eggs off your face. George Welsh should see if he has any football eligibility available <laughs> with those moves. He can line up at running back. We're tied at 29 at the half of the NIT championship game. Cycles. One of the most technologically advanced, most rigorously tested fluids on Earth, relentlessly measured for maximum protection against the friction, the wear and tear, the heat and stress of today's engines. It is today's Quaker State. In Europe, in Japan, in America, Quaker State quality has passed the most demanding tests automakers can throw at it. At Quaker State, we don't just say we're tough, we're tested tough. The big Q is one tough motor oil.
ESPN's College Basketball is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world. And by the people of Nike, who encourage you to just do it. And welcome back to Madison Square Garden. We're at halftime of the 55th annual NIT championship game. Notre Dame and Virginia tied at 29. Earlier tonight, Utah met Florida. In the third place game, it was Utah coming away with the victory in that one by a final score of 81 to 78. Early on, Florida's Andrew DeClerc with the slam dunk. He had 14 points in 30 minutes. That was answered by a layup by Jimmy Soto. The talented guard from Utah had 12. Then Paul Afiaki finishing the break as the Utes hung on for a three-point win. And speaking of Paul Afiaki, I'm joined by Paul and Jimmy Soto of the Utes at halftime. Paul was a nice win. I guess the first and most obvious question was, how tough was it to come out and play in the third place game tonight, given the disappointment that you fellas had with that bitter ending to the game on Monday night? That was pretty emotional coming out and uh, actually playing, you know, uh, thinking that, hey, you know, we, we, we could have been playing tonight uh, in this game right here. Uh, you know, we, we had our heads in in the game when we came in. Uh, you know, it was just a big game for us, especially the seniors. You know, no, uh, you know, not a lot of teams you know ends their uh, their career or their their season with a win. You know, and so we were, we were very fortunate to play. Obviously, our ESPN audience did not see the game earlier tonight against Florida. From your standpoint, what were the keys to the win tonight over the Gators? I think it was just the movement of our ball and containing them to you know make them play our game. Uh, just slowed it down more. You know, it went uh, in the 90s or 80s or 70s. You know, we just kind of, we just contain them really. Paul, let's bring in your teammate Jimmy Soto, the talented guard, sixth man, but sees more minutes than any other member of the Utah Utes. Jimmy, how about the experience here in New York for you and your teammates? Have you enjoyed it? Yeah, it was a really nice experience for us and the team. Uh, it's, uh, it was a great opportunity, especially to play in the NIT tournament. And the team, you know, we gutted it out through, you know, five, four or five games, and we were just happy to be playing in uh, one of the games and have a chance to end the season with a win. And it was really a nice season for you fellas with 24 wins, despite the fact that you only had Josh Grant, the WAC Player of the Year, last year for three games this year because of his knee surgery. Uh, with that in mind, are you surprised at how well you guys did without Grant? It was pretty tough uh, coming into the season knowing that we were going to be missing Josh. And I think we did a great job of having a bunch of guys step up and pick up the slack for Josh in different areas. And uh, we, we just, I think the team did a great job, you know, and uh, we scrapped and clawed through the whole year, and especially with the lack of size. And uh, I was just happy with the season this year. As well you should be. Jimmy, thanks very much. Thank you very much. Paul Afiaki and Jimmy Soto of the victorious Utah Utes, they beat Florida in the consolation game tonight. We'll talk with Coach Rick Majerus right after this. Point of fact, it takes the average person an average of 20 keystrokes to do an average task with their PC. Counterpoint, you can do it with just a point and click with Microsoft Windows. Tie game, back after this. Twist off seven up caps and win as the Uncola celebrates the 100th year of basketball. Collect all the seven up caps you can because if you spell Y E A R, you win a $10,000 college scholarship or win a Spalding mini basketball instantly. So collect your Uncola caps and win. Seven up employees not eligible. <laughs> win part of a million dollars in scholarships from Seven Up, the Uncola. Gillette presents Sensor, the system, the technology that will change the way you shave forever. Sensor, twin blades set on springs to read your face and respond. Independent suspension to sense and adjust to every curve of your face. No other razor comes close. Gillette Sensor, for the best shave a man can get. The Isuzu Trooper right on time. has been thoughtfully redesigned to include a new suspension system. Honey, pothole. I see it. Giving it an incredibly smooth, quiet ride on the road as well as off. Of course, these days, what's the difference? Terry is impressed with the ease of Microsoft Word for Windows. 
But more importantly, the office is impressed with Terry. Microsoft Word, the word processor for Windows. Welcome back to Madison Square Garden in New York at halftime. Virginia and Notre Dame tied at 29. It's been a busy day for college basketball. Let's check in with Dan Patrick. All right, thank you, Sean. And here are some of the stories we're working on tonight, including a real shocker in college hoops. The running rebels of UNLV have themselves a new head coach. He is Roly Massimino, who leaves the Villanova Wildcats. Massimino takes over the program left when Jerry Tarkanian resigned at the end of the regular season. Tarkanian left a program which was on probation this season. Massimino goes to UNLV after spending 19 seasons at Villanova and winning the national title exactly seven years ago. ESPN has learned that LSU junior center Shaquille O'Neal will leave school a year early and apply for the NBA draft. That announcement could come as early as Friday. The Shaq averaged 24 points, 14 rebounds, and five blocked shots this season. He is the consensus number one pick. And by an overwhelming vote of 560 to 4, NHL players today rejected the owner's final contract offer. And so the first league-wide player strike in NHL history has begun which means the end of the regular season and the Stanley Cup playoffs are in jeopardy. But the two sides are negotiating tonight in Toronto trying to settle. We'll have those stories as well as NBA highlights and much more tonight on SportsCenter immediately after the NIT final game. Now let's go back to Madison Square Garden. Thank you, Bill, and welcome back, everybody, to Madison Square Garden. Virginia and Notre Dame tied at 29 at the half. We're joined by Rick Majerus and Coach. First, I'd be interested in your reaction to the two big news events that Bill just covered in his report. Roly Massimino going to UNLV. Your name had been mentioned for that job several times, and Shaquille O'Neal's coming out, apparently. Well, I think Shaquille O'Neal is certainly, you know, ready to play in the NBA, and I think from a monetary standpoint and from a playing standpoint, there's no question about it. I think his emotional maturation is going to be suspect. He needs to get with a team where there's some guys like Moncrief and those kind of high-level guys that will help bring him along. And and uh, if he can do that, I think he'll be fine. And Roley going to UNLV? It's a great job. Nowhere in America is there a greater chasm between the first-place team in the league and second, third, and fourth. And it's a job that you have access to a great number of players. At least it's warm. And He'll do a wonderful job there. I think he'll be in his element because I think Vegas is comprised of a lot of people like Philadelphians and New Yorkers that are moved out there. So he'll be right at home in his element. You know, your name was uh, bandied about, and I thought you might jump there because they have so many great restaurants. Well, yeah, I, you know, the last thing I need though is another meal. I mean, you know, <laughs> I, uh, I, 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 they, they expressed an interest in me, and I had a, a bit of one of them, but. You know, I, I, I really like it at Utah. The people have been great to me. I've had bypass surgery there. My best friend lives in Utah. I really enjoy uh, Utah. The people have been kind to me. And it was, it was gut-wrenching for me to say goodbye to my players at Notre Dame and at Ball State. And I wouldn't want to have experienced that uh, again. And, I, and, I, and I'm very, very happy. You know, money can't love you back. And, and you know, it, it, but the people are, are very nice. And it's a great opportunity. I think Roley will do a good job. And I wouldn't be surprised if see him in the Final Four within a short period of time. Rick, thanks very much. Good luck next season. Thank you very much. I wish Notre Dame all the best here. And This is a first-class tournament, the NIT. I want to say that and thank the people here who hosted it. We are privileged and proud to have been a participant of it. And uh, maybe next year we can get back in, in a, you know, a big dance. But when you're fat and bald, you're happy to be in any dance. <laughs> I believe me, I know. <laughs> thanks, Rick. Part of that, anyhow. <laughs> Rick Majerus of the Utah Utes. They won the third place game tonight. We're back in just a moment. You're invited backstage for a rare intimate look at superstar James Taylor. Oh, I've seen fire, I've seen rain. It's very funny to be me publicly, reluctantly publicly, you know. I'll never stop my one. A Disney Channel exclusive. You got a friend. Don't miss James Taylor going home during the Disney Channel's free preview.
It's Universal Ford's run for number one. For number one in price, would Dick Meadows send a friend to Universal? Uh-huh. And for convenience, does Mickey recommend Universal? Uh-huh. 92 Big Broncos discounted to 58.50. A 92 Ranger XLT with AC, no money down, 189 a month. 92 F-150s, no money down, 199 a month. Universal Ford is Central Virginia's fastest growing Ford dealer. And we're running for number one in sales and service. Universal Ford. On West Broad. In Glen Allen. Across from Innsbruck. The one friends recommend. Uh-huh. Why do sports fans turn to ESPN first? Because baseball is always... In your face. In your face. In your face. ESPN. ESPN. Your face. And welcome back to Madison Square Garden. 29-29, our halftime score. Notre Dame led through most of the first half. But Virginia, with the late run, tied it up. The... Field goal percentages came steadily down throughout the course of the half. They both started out hot and then cooled off somewhat, and just about all the stats even. And Notre Dame with those five, it was five to one at one point of turnovers, so they've been having their problem, and they've had difficulty getting those good shots they got earlier. 29 all at halftime. We'll return to Madison Square Garden in New York in just a moment. When David and Lisa Edmondson needed life insurance, they came to see me. I'm Kent Spearman, their State Farm agent. I help the Edmondsons put together a life insurance plan that works for them and their budget. And I stay in touch as their needs grow and change because that plan has to work for their children, Rachel and Travis, too. If you want life insurance that works for you, get an agent who works for you. Get yourself a State Farm agent. State Farm sells life insurance. Hey, check it out. Check it out. It's starting to snow. Besides a powerful V6 engine and a gripping new suspension, the Isuzu Trooper has been thoughtfully redesigned. Let me see that hand. To include a tiny little knob. But four wheeling now, buddy. To make everything right in the world again. It's one of the most technologically advanced, most rigorously tested fluids on Earth, relentlessly measured for maximum protection against the friction, the wear and tear, the heat and stress of today's engines. It is today's Quaker State. In Europe, in Japan, in America, Quaker State quality has passed the most demanding tests automakers can throw at it. At Quaker State, we don't just say we're tough, we're tested tough. The big Q is one tough motor oil. Every summer weekend, millions of the smartest guys in America fire up their Murray mowers. What makes them so smart is that Murray's rated one of the best in quality and performance, with a two-year warranty backed by 10,000 service dealers at a price that's about half of other top quality mowers, which makes Murray mowers tough as they come, any way you cut it. ESPN's College Basketball is brought to you by Isuzu, makers of the all-new, thoughtfully redesigned Isuzu Trooper. By Quaker State, the Big Q is one tough motor oil. And by ESPN Home Video, producers and distributors of Super Slams, available at video and retail stores nationwide. Welcome back to New York City. Bryant Stiff facing the Cavaliers. He had more than half his team's points in the first half, 15 of the 29. And you spoke at the outset, Bill, about the importance for Virginia of someone else helping the cause. Well, uh, Stith might be able to do it himself, too, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, it always helps, particularly when they shade to a player like Stith. Burrow guarded by Ellis. Nice little help by Sweet. Good ball moving by the Cavaliers. Oliver missed the layup. Kept alive by Burrow, and now by Ellis. Finally, it wound up in the hands of Junior Burrow. Sweet didn't grab it. He tried to go behind the back. 
with everybody having a good time. You heard Majerus talk about it in New York. Particularly, that's a little nickel, huh? And? A couple of cents, dime out. <laughs> oh, out of the gate. Check the pee and a whistle. What was the defense to open the half? Little man to man. <laughs> but the assistants particularly have a great time in New York. Now, do the tape work, get out on the town. My buddy Jeff Nix, uh, known to open and close a few horn and hard arts. But the uh, tough thing, I think, is Stith gets the inbound. Pretty good day. It went out of bounds off Tower and Bennett. Virginia will keep it. You mentioned Rick Majerus. You look at the assistants alongside John McLeod. Oh, that was Skip Meyer, the trainer, and Jimmy Black. But Greg Demeck, if I'm saying it right, Steve Hudson, two graduate assistants. They're out of work after this year with that new role. They'll be at the convention looking for jobs. Mm. Seven points for Corey Alexander as the three-pointer gives Virginia the lead. Tough to replace guys because they have so many assignments that others will have to absorb now, the least of. Think about this, all the academic help they get. Virginia on an 8-0 run, trying to add to that. Oliver pulls up and misses. Rebounded by Billy Taylor. Sweet one-on-one -on -one with Alexander. Nice double. See, this has been a problem. He's not been able to do much down low. If he moves out a little, he might be able to bounce by Ted Jeffries. He beat LaFonce. David Sweet is yet to score for Notre Dame. He's still scoreless. Tower the strong follow. And a whistle. Tower was fouled on the floor by Junior Burrow. His first. That was a elder statesman foul by Junior. A little bit physical. They've been whacking one another at the other end. Started to talk about Rick Majerus and how well he handled all of that. He was obviously upset, rightfully so, at the end of Monday night's game. And there was an awful lot of talk in the New York papers and on the talk shows in this town the last couple of days about the ending of the game. But he uh, was really a good guy. Class I think the people saw at halftime. Uh, if it's just a, a, a great personality and a sense of what it's all about with his kids, too. Nice relationship with his players. And felt so bad after that. Another one by Jeffries to tag on the cut by Ellis. First foul on Jeffries. Starting tomorrow at 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Sports Center from the Final Four. Tune in for analysis and breaking stories starting tomorrow night at 11. They need Sweet to get on track. I mentioned Parker earlier. Oliver started the game on him, now back at the beginning of this half. And Damon hasn't seen many of these sweet shots. He is ice cold. Tower. And this time Sweet passes it up. He'll try again. The first bucket of the night. For Damon Sweet, the senior from Beaumont, Texas. Shooters keep after it. They only had two shots in that first half. A one point lead for Virginia. Oliver scoring over Sweet. Oh, oh, oh. Elmer Bennett. Oh. Overdrive. And that's not typical. Cavalier defense. They usually pay attention and break the kind of Cavalier defense in a different sense. <laughs> Attitude wise, eh? yes. very nice. 34 33 Virginia. We played three minutes in the second half. Now, Sean McDonough, you did the BC game, right? Boston College mm -hmm. another day. This is some different team, isn't it? It's is amazing how far they've come, and I think it's a credit, as John McLeod said, to the players sticking with it, not getting discouraged. Nice pump fake. Alfonso Ellis now with 10. The average is just under 18 a game. And John's patience to it. It took a while for them to adjust to his NBA type approach. Almost exclusively man-to-man -man defense in the up-tempo style. A departure from the days of Digger Phelps. Followed by Tower. Uh, maybe Bennett on the way up. First, Notre Dame over the years has had phenomenal wins. Every year they upset somebody. This year, a case in point, they just prepare and emotionally get it going. But uh, Tower with pretty good position. Well, this is earlier, the inside little shove and banging. And mm. the foul was called on Bennett. 
for the reach in not on the tower on the collision and that's three fouls on Elmer Bennett and he's one of those guys he's 36 minutes a game so no. he's invaluable runs the show gets everybody involved he's still in there for coach McLeod nine points now for junior burrow As you look at it from the upper deck trading card camera. And as a kid, we all looked at it from that angle. That's about the angle these players had last night. Both teams <laughs> came to the garden to watch the Knicks and the Bulls and were treated to quite a show. They're ruling now, apparently, that Virginia was out of bounds in front of its own bench. When, obviously, when they touched it, they were lying out of bounds. Any explanation Jeff bought? Somewhat. We have some disgruntled Virginia fans. Yes, we do. Aren't very cavalier in their attitude. <laughs> Jeffries with the bulk and the shady now. Ellis. Taylor going to handle the rebound. It's tracked down by Burrow. Virginia with the ball and a one-point lead. He's past four minutes played in the second half. Jeffries, nice shot, left-handed, first bucket of the night for Ted Jeffries. Much better job by Alexander, recognizing the post-up and then delivering. UVA by three. <laughs> Cornell Parker, tall, wow. Would you like to say it again? Well, I don't have enough change left. <laughs> we'll earn some change. We'll be back after this. If you're into working out, Bud Light invites you to get ready for the ultimate workout. The Bud Light Triathlon Series. Just try it. The Isuzu Trooper right on time. has been thoughtfully redesigned to include a new suspension system. Honey, bottle. I see it. Giving it an incredibly smooth, quiet ride on the road as well as off. Of course, these days, what's the difference? Shower yourself with a new sensation. New refreshing shield. Feel the blast. The high energy beat of shield's unique skin vigorating formula. Refreshment that'll turn you around. New refreshing shield. A new arrival. A tire so special, it may last as long as you own your car. The new XH4. Congratulations. It's a Michelin. John McLeod said yesterday if you had told him in December he'd be in the NIT championship game, he'd have questioned your sanity. And LaFonso Ellis told us his team stuck with it after that rocky start. I don't think everyone was very comfortable with the new system. We have been playing a lot of zone in the past, and it was a big transition period starting to come out and play in that man-to-man -man defense, so it took us a while to get adjusted. Well, Louis kind of second. He could have some guttural tones between them, but the great thing about this youngster is Digger told me he wanted to be an accountant and how hard that is. We mentioned this the other night, how he stuck to it, even through the downtime, and now... Within what, 12 hours? Yeah, he's going to graduate this, uh, this spring. He's finished. He'll be able to add up all the money the NBA gives him or keep track of it. <laughs> I guess Tower with the discard of Burrow. First foul on Keith Tower. Three team fouls against the Irish. Virginia leads 38 35. Sean McDonough and Bill Raftery, happy to have you with us for the NIT championship game. And it was interesting to see Tower asking, or at least giving you the glance about potential Red Sox tickets. Out of those families in Boston. That's right. <laughs> Went to high school in the Pittsburgh area, but his 
Family now lives in the greater Boston area. That's Corey Alexander with nine points. Where was he early on? I think just getting him out of the lineup in the first few minutes helped Jeff Jones. Shake him up a little. This is the largest lead for Virginia, 40 to 35. Sweet. Oh, air ball. I think he got the elbow, too. That's the old playground job. When I used to have a friend of mine, Kenny McPherson, every time he shot the jumper, I just tick the yeah, nickel dime foul. Mm -hmm. And uh, you couldn't call it. You found some change. Yeah, exactly. You've got to only call aggressive, meaning fouls. Well, even though they're playing for the NIT championship, there's a great deal at stake. Might Virginia have taken Notre Dame a little lightly earlier, given that they had a 27-point win over them in January? I, I think the championship takes that away. I just think they understood Notre Dame had stepped their game up. And they looked at enough tape and saw them here the other night. Stiff, the strong rebound of the miss by Bennett. This is where he's improved. I think he's much better in the open floor. Oh. Alexander with three more. 12 points for the freshman from Waynesboro, Virginia, and the Cavaliers have opened up an eight-point lead with 13.45 to play. A 9-0 Virginia run. That causes a timeout call by John McLeod. And we'll return to Madison Square Garden in just a moment. Most guys kick back on the weekends. Jack, on the other hand, so how do you feel? Great rock and roll. Only one beer has the taste as genuine as the people who drink it. Budweiser. Tomorrow, we're sleeping in. Gillette presents Sensor, the system, the technology that will change the way you shave forever. Sensor, twin blades set on springs to read your face and respond. Independent suspension to sense and adjust to every curve of your face. No other razor comes close. Gillette Sensor, for the best shave a man can get. When we made the best-built, best-selling Ford full-size pickup more stylish, we also made it a more comfortable place for people. Why did we make Explorer so spacious? Because that's what people need. Ford redefined the word truck. But we didn't forget who made us number one. More people are driving the best-built, best-selling American trucks than ever before. Well, you've got your you and then you have our upper deck trading upper. card camera <laughs> and stint to the open floor we mentioned his improvement but if you're going to talk about why Virginia's taking command it's Corey Alexander eight points and one assist this is that delay break kickback for the tray so Corey after maybe being shaken and that's the view up high that only those with the cheaper seats can take heat up he has done it all here in this second half Malik Russell back into the game for Notre Dame. Carl Cozen in as well. Interesting that John McLeod goes to the bench with his team on the short end of a 9-0 run at the moment. Oh, he's got to get some stops. Not necessarily on Smith, but on Virginia. And maybe get a little more motion in their offense. I think Yellow's down on the box. Too many people know where he is. Elmer Bennett now with 17 for the Irish. And they're down by six with 13-10 to play. Ellis has great foot speed. That's what I mean by that. He can slash, flash to a post, and then make his quick move. But if he just posts up, everybody knows it can help. Stiff. Missed the three. Tower couldn't corral it, but Bennett does. It's three on two. Bennett, a little too fancy for LaFonso Ellis. Alexander off to Stiff. That pass was knowing who the better player is pass. Parker got it to drop. Jeff Jones wanted a foul called. Cornell Parker with his first points of the night. He's a sophomore from Norfolk, Virginia. Russell stumbling over the Madison.
Madison Square Garden Emblem. Well, it's New York, it's in Boston. Ellis. Oh. No basket. Ted Jeffries whistled for the personal, his second. He has done just a great job down there. Banging, he's got that big, wide chest and frame. And occasionally getting those others involved. They shade, look to help. They get a little zone from Burrow. Jeffries, first cousin of Adrian Branch, the former Maryland Terrapin standout and NBA player. And the Matha kid, huh? Morgan Wooden, Hall of Famer. And like his cousin. Jeffries, a DeMatha product. Mm -hmm. Two fouls now against Anthony Oliver. Notre Dame quicker with the shot, it seems, as they got behind here. Plenty of time. We've got a lot of third people in the ring here. We do. This. Voices. Although being at the nickname last night and sitting in the stands was an experience as well. You heard things you've never heard yes. before. Cozen fouled. Uh, good fake through the foul. Nice patience that time, though. Good deployment, got their high-low set, and then the dump down by Tower. Coming up Sunday at 9.30 p.m. live, that's Eastern Time, the 1992 College Basketball Slam Dunk and Three-Point Shooting Championship. They need a longer title, presented by Diet Pepsi. Among those competing, LaFonso Ellis from Notre Dame. <laughs> It's amazing in New York, though. You don't, you've never known how many ways you can order a hot dog. <laughs> well, I had the best meal that I've had in the metro New York area in a long time last night at a place called Doyle and Rafteries <laughs> in Jersey City. Doing my best uh, Dick, Val, uh, Dick Vitale imitation uh, to help your cause. He's still going to pay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Notre Dame looking for a little more Pressure. They only got Ellis. Everybody else backed up. Notre Dame just two for four from the free throw line. Good hit. Had it blocked. Loose ball picked up by Oliver. Oh, he had a great dunk down to Stith. And Stith alertly. With the steal, he missed the layup. Russell battling Tower for the rebound. Finally, Notre Dame possesses. Virginia enjoying its largest lead, nine points. In this low scoring game, it might take Notre Dame a while to crack back in. And the patience that you have to have against Virginia creates a problem with the clock. They're just doing a great job against them. Barnes behind this time, Burrow around, Oliver in front. Burrow powers in, blocked away by Ellis. And Bennett lost it over the sideline. But it will be. Notre Dame ball. You need quick decisions when they're swarming. And this is just a problem you have in the singles bars. A lot of attention. Everybody down. You got to kick it back out, reset, or get a screen and reverse to the ball. Attracting attention. Sweet. Oh. Off the mark. Barnes again ripping it away. He lost it, but they say it's Virginia ball. Apparently, Tower knocked it out, although Keith is not in agreement. And Notre Dame only has two points on putbacks. And Virginia keeps banging the glass and coming back with 12. So maybe the main reason that Virginia's in command. Oliver Punt. Count it. Keith Tower guilty of the foul. That's not important, huh? You know how he feels, and you saw the Virginia guys as Oliver and Alexander, a backcourt that when they play well, it appears that Virginia's got a good shot at winning, and these kids happy to be in NYC and going to the goal without much attention on that baseline. Oliver at the line. He has eight points tonight. The rebound by Tower. 
saw the graphic of leading by 10 points or more at any time this season. Virginia is unbeaten, and they're up by 11, their largest lead, with 10 minutes to play. And a foul on Barnes as he hit LaFonso Ellis. Now, what happened then? The quick cut to the box, they got it down. It's a play where they'll hit and follow, rub off a tower, and he'll flash. They got it down, and that's what they need more of. When they can identify his position, they seem to have a problem offensively. Bryant Stiff quickly back in for the Cavaliers, replacing Anthony Oliver. And here's LaFonso at the line with 10 points. He's had 22 double doubles this year, double points and double figures rather, in points and rebounds. And that's in just 32 games. About midnight, I may have the same. His stock has gone up. And I think because of attitude, this guy giving him a little more understanding maybe what it takes the commitment is as noted uh, unable to perform two years in a row that takes a lot out of you certainly John McLeod great man hear him for the NBA it is 18 years as coach of Phoenix Dallas and the New York Knicks Barnes Taylor with plenty of contact but no whistle Cavaliers can afford to be patient. And they are, and Bennett doing a nice job of keeping Alexander away from it. Burrow lost the handle, 20 seconds on the shot clock. Burrow had it blocked by Tower. Loose ball to Taylor. He is double teamed and fouled by Yuri Barnes. Nice job, I think, by the officials letting them play off mm -hmm. the glass. Going after it, good, clean, hard basketball. Where's Jeff? Looking to get a little assist there. Jeff became head coach of the Cavs at age 30, making him the youngest head coach in ACC basketball history. And he's having considerable success at a young age. Mm -hmm. He benefited from studying under one of the all-time great gentlemen in the sport, he? Terry Holland. Terry's a class act. And I wouldn't be surprised someday to see him back mm -hmm. coaching. Well, I hope not, because it would be a loss for ESPN. Oh, yeah, he, a he's a very job. talented guy in the air. I don't mean it for that reason, mm -hmm. but uh, certainly doesn't well, hurt the competition. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think he did it very well, related well, and understood what it took to run a program. How many more games can you do? Well, i got to be up in the Bronx for a night, uh, a midnight <laughs> one. Taylor with six. Virginia by seven. 9.20 to play. And Notre Dame playing the man-to-man, -man, not extending the floor very much. Very patient. Stiff off the mark. Ellis lost the handle. Bennett saved it in the corner. Five on four with Burrow out of the play at the moment. That's for three. Sweet. Looked like it was deflected by Parker in the corner. Parker doing a nice job defensively when he's in on Sweet, as he did in the first meeting with Notre Dame this year. Jeffrey just, oh, I bet it legally. Foul of the rebound action. It was on the floor, Taylor fouled stiff. Two fouls on Billy Taylor, the freshman from Aurora, Illinois. I believe that's the home of Wayne's World, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, Aurora, Illinois. I know, you're, I know you're busy in the evening socially. The shot by Sweet, a little too quick. They've been very patient to get involved and get good shots the last few possessions. So the quick hitter enabled Virginia to come down, get a bump, a jump shot, and showing the inside ability, Brian Stith, he can contribute all around the horn. Parker, out to Stith. Smith now with the ball, he's just checked in. Doug Smith, number 11, a junior from Fayetteville, Tennessee. Burrow had it deflected by LaFonso Ellis. Notre Dame has done an unbelievably good job in this tournament of blocking shots. In the first four NIT games, Coming into tonight, they have 32 block shots as a team. Ellis stepping it up. He wants the basketball to sprint to the box, begging and flailing away. I think Western Michigan, they had 10 blocks, right? Kansas mm -hmm. State. LaFonso had eight alone in that game against Kansas State. And they out, well, they had four blocks a game over the course of the season. But he's showing some great desire to want to lead his club right now. And the kids around them contributing by dumping it down. 
Jeffries to the bench with four personal fouls. Notre Dame has blocked five shots tonight. And LaFonso, the all-time career leader and single season record holder. That single season record set this season. And here's the beg, Sean, and that was positioned by a sprint. I mean, he's really active at this point in the game, and that's why Sweet's jumper only get it after a kick out. Mm. Be patient, get the big guy in it. Two free throws for Ellis. 14 for LaFonso, and all of a sudden the lead is down to five for Virginia with 8.25 to play. Stith should touch it. There's a double on one side, a single on the other for him. Taylor defending Stith. Tower double team. Stith forced it up and missed. Checked down by Sweet. The Irish looked around. Bennett is setting up for a three. He's fouled on a try for two by Junior Burrow. Two fouls on Burrow. A little more aggressive, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Pushing it up. And even if they don't have the break, they've been in a position to get guys on the box or dribble penetrate as they did that time. Doug Smith out. Corey Alexander back in for Virginia. Notre Dame is on a six to nothing run. All of those points coming from the foul line. And John showing that patience too. Didn't go for the press, the trapping type of situation. One guy up. Better attention to business in the half court set. Elmer Bennett with 17 points, most of them very early. And six assists, make it 18 now. He had a shot of John McLeod, always well dressed. He didn't see his watch, but he was wearing a watch given to him in 1970 when he was the head coach at Oklahoma. And the NIT gives gifts to all the participants. John still has the 1970 NIT watch. He says he's wearing it for good luck, although in that year they lost to Pistol Pete Maravich and LSU in the quarterfinals. A three-point lead for the Cavs. We are back after this. Hey, hey, little taste buds. <laughs> are you ready for <laughs> grilled chicken <laughs> and riblets? Oh, steak and riblets. <laughs> chicken fingers <laughs> and riblets. <laughs> Spicy wings <laughs> and riblets. <laughs> Take me, please, to Applebee's. The Applebee's Combo Dinner. Two great tastes, one great price. Applebee's, America's favorite neighbor. Party on, taste buds. It's Richmond Braves baseball, and box seat season tickets are on sale now. That's tickets to all home games, including the AAA All-Star Game in Richmond, July 15th. And you could win use of the Braves Superbox for a game. Pick up a registration form at any Ucrop supermarket. And while you're at Ucrops, look for these ticket drive sponsors. Picked Sweet Frozen Vegetables, Evian Natural Spring Water, Texas Pete Chili No Beans, and Snapple Natural Beverages. Opening day is April 9th, and season tickets are on sale now. Call 359-4444. Tonight on SportsCenter, they're no longer the Rebels without a coach as a Wildcat replaces the Shark. The NBA braces itself for a Shaq attack next season, and the NHL season is on ice. Join us tonight. Notre Dame down by three. We mentioned Monday night that the Notre Dame starters account for 80% of the team's minutes played, 88% of their points, and 81% of the rebounds. And most of that damage done by the three senior Ironmen. Fatigue could be a factor. They played a lot of minutes again here tonight, second game in three days. Well, they relaxed a little bit yesterday. They had a workout. Today, the shoot around. Uh, I think these kids are used to it. I, they've shown inner strength at this point. And we'll see if the fatigue does come into effect. It's been a very evenly played Final Four. All of the games contested right down to the end and this one looks to be headed for the wire Oliver scores Virginia's lead back to five with 740 to play this is the NIT championship game from Madison Square Garden in New York Sean McDonough along with Bill Raftery Bennett for two short might have been tipped by Alexander 
a little bit of a hurry. Instead of reversing, Virginia did a nice job forcing it on this side of the floor away from Lafonso Ellis. The largest lead for Virginia was 11. It's five at the moment. Burrow deflected by Ellis. Sixth block shot of the night for Notre Dame. Notre Dame ball. They are competing, aren't they, both clubs? Jeff Jones really gave Burrow an earful about the shot selection. The fadeaway, yeah. Seven minutes to play. So they just won't let them reverse it to set up LaFonso. Virginia doing a great job negating his cuts and the screenaways. He's got his guy now. Good front and support. Ellis in and out. Rebounded by Barnes. Talk about the competitive nature of this Final Four. And defense is the thing that these teams all seem to have in common. And then they all know how to take you out of what you look at this good stepping up big time. Anthony Oliver on the money. And with Stiff being played well, they've had the ability to counter. Notre Dame has to do the same thing. Whistle away from the ball against Anthony Oliver. Anthony with 12 points in the game, 10 this half. As Bill mentioned, he really has picked it up over the last few minutes. That's his third foul. And I looked at Jeff Jones and his assistants jumped up. Tom Perrin, Brian Allenby, and Dennis Wolf. He said, relax, relax. They don't want to see and or experience any difficulties going down the stretch. Oh, and we certainly know <laughs> that they're capable of having that happen. You couldn't let that slide, huh? Tom Perrin did the breakdown as many clubs assign one particular guy. And he looks like he's taking this, well, they all take it personal, but dying because uh, it's his preparation that enables him to win, I'm sure. That, is in his mind. Jeff Nix does it for ND. Just three points tonight for Sweet. They get four. Damon averaging 22 points per game in his career in this building. But he's had a quiet night. Now the old timers have a clock in their head. John, six minutes and change now. Goes with the full court pressure. They're knocking right at the door. Not giving up a basket. They were passive. Burrow. Alexander, the freshman point guard, nicely off the glass for two. <laughs> These two kids have been sub second half. Alexander's had a nice final four. He had nine assists, a career high in the semifinal win over Florida. And tonight he has 14 points. See, Taylor's just not able to contribute on this end, although he can. He lights it up. They need somebody. Ben at that time. Three for Bennett, giving him 22 for the game. Notre Dame had misfired on its last six shots from the floor prior to that three-point goal. Virginia by four, 5.15 to play. Burrow, a whistle. Will it count? Yes. All without Stiff. Think about it. Taylor on the defensive end, making it tough for Brian to get the ball, catch it where he can do some extraordinary things, but the guards, most of the half, and occasionally Junior, banging him home like a senior. Foul was on LaFonso Ellis, his second. Burrow at the line, he has 12 points. He and Alexander were roommates at Oak Hill Academy. We talked the other day about all the players that school has sent to. College basketball. Brian Shorter, right? McNeil, Chris McNeil, Rod Strickland, amongst others, right? Mm -hmm. They have a laundry list. Notre Dame down by seven. We're under five minutes to play. The Irish in the NIT championship game for the third time. They haven't won it. Bennett almost single handedly trying to win it for Notre Dame. 24 points for Elmer Bennett. Alexander good on the offensive end. Now he's got to concentrate on Elmer on the D. This nice double, nice hedge by Keith Tower. Oliver from the foul line, off the mark. Jeffries all over Tower on the rebound action. 
Who'd they call it against? I think it's got to be Jeffries. Oh, well, they got it on Tower. <laughs> oh. Three fouls on Tower. If it was on Jeffries, it was five, so that's a big call. Oh. Live first round action in the Cadillac Senior PGA event. Comes your way tomorrow at one. Jack Nicholas trying to win this event for the third year in a row. He'll be challenged by Gary Player, Chi Chi Rodriguez, and Lee Trevino, among others. Jeffries made the first. Well, this is a big call. This is, and I, I guess, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> what did Tower do? Uh, Tower <laughs> just got into the sofa area, right? Flipped his leg on the coffee table. He was See? pushed right in any, oh, everybody's oh, living room. Goodness, Jeffries. Really lucky that he got away with that. It wasn't a smart decision on his part with four fouls. No. So obviously be pushing and shoving and he cut a large break. Six point lead for Virginia. Sweet. Makes it a four point lead for Virginia. Oh, they needed some people other than LaFonso. Bennett Sweet have been the guys. Bennett. Oh! Up to Sweet. He juggled it. If he had caught it cleanly, he had a breakaway layup. Heck of a play by Bennett. Almost led to an assist, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Notre Dame down by four with the ball. Under four minutes to play. Bennett fouled as he started the drive. Corey Alexander called for the foul. His second. Coordinated defenses on both ends of the floor, Sean, and that's enabled both clubs to come up with some big plays. Everybody down, Keith getting a piece, Ellis getting a piece, and the ability to run it down by Elmer Bennett was beautiful. And still find somebody as he jumped into the air. Elmer Bennett. The lead is down to three. 25 points tonight for Bennett. The ninth leading scorer in Notre Dame history. And the all-time leading three-point shooter at Notre Dame. The lead is two. Momentum. Clearly on the side of the Irish with 3.41 to play at Madison Square Garden. It's like a Swiss Army knife. Durable, reliable, versatile. Hatch goes up, seats go down. Downshifting into a curb, I can feel the GT16 valves kick in. Kicking and screaming. Well, you know, kids. But my escort wagon gives them room to spread out. Outstanding value. Finally, a sophisticated car I can afford. Ford Escort, America's most popular small car, for a lot of good reasons. Have you driven a Ford lately? When a man ran a grueling 26-mile marathon in a pair of dress shoes, what was he thinking? He was thinking, I'm glad they're Rockport's. Rockport, you should be in our shoes. Hit Pizza Hut for a supreme pizza loaded with six delicious toppings like mouth-watering pepperoni, mushrooms, and green peppers. Right now, get a medium supreme for $7.99 and any other medium for just four bucks more. Get Pizza Hut tonight! Boys in the Hood's Larry Fishburne has a new job. We got real lucky today. He's got to think like a criminal. It's not 10 kilos we want, we want 20. I don't trust you. Act like a dealer. Reorganist. Do Macy's tell gimbals. And be the best cop on these streets. Don't blow your cup. Featuring new music by Dr. Dre. Deep Cover. Rated R. Opens Wednesday, April 15th at a theater near you. Notre Dame has come from 11 down to get within two with 341 to play in the NIT championship game. You know, it's incredible when you think of it. They didn't get anything out of extending the floor. The longer you're around, and uh, judging by you some mornings, you've been around quite a while. <laughs> uh, you have a clock in your head, and that's what I think John McLeod showed. These are the numbers that got them back in it, huh? Starting to pile up the free throws. Faring very well from the line are the Irish. Brian Stiff is scoreless in the second half. 
And he's only attempted four shots, so they've done a great job keeping the ball away from him. And how few touches, you're right. He has not gotten it in position to do much damage. Alexander left alone for three. Oh. He has done some damage. Indeed, he has. 17 points. He was a first team parade and McDonald's All American in high school last year. Boy, Jeffrey worked so hard. He doubled up outside, then got back to help on the post on Ellis. Here he is, hedging. And then recovering. 20 seconds on the shot clock. We're under three minutes to play. Virginia by five. Look at all the people around. Subway rush hour. Offensive foul called against Lafonso Ellis. He had to hook him. He doesn't seem that upset. You've got to find people. You attract all these uniforms. You got to get it. Oh my goodness. What did he do? I didn't see the wing come out. Three fouls on Ellis. Perhaps two and a half. And we're down to two and a half minutes remaining. Virginia with a five point lead. Stiff. Still scoreless in the half. Rough down by Ellis. <laughs> that was secure. Bennett leads in. Wouldn't fall. But he'll go to the line for two shots. Well, he had some touch on that kiss, didn't he? I couldn't get over Ellis's rebound, but also Taylor has played Stitz so well. Mm -hmm. He made him rush the jumper. He wasn't even close on that release. You, know, you think of Taylor as a defensive player, particularly when you watch him tonight. But he came into tonight's action with 206 points, and that's more points as a freshman for Notre Dame than players like John Paxson, Tracy Jackson, Orlando Woolridge. Or Damon Sweet. Mm -hmm. Well, role players, it's mm -hmm. essential to have them. And anytime they step it up a little, it makes it easier for these, at least this trio, Bennett, Sweet, and Ellis. Get in there, Sweet. Bennett, with 27 points, his career high 38 earlier this season against Detroit Mercy, the most points. In a game by a member of the Fighting Irish, it's Adrian Danley at 41 against LaSalle in 1976. It's back to a three-point lead for Virginia. We're approaching two minutes remaining. Notre Dame lets him catch it stiff. He's always, that's as close as he's been in a while. It's usually at 22 feet away. Shot clock at 15. Nice screen by Jeffries. Oliver missed the wide open jumper. Bennett pulled the rebound away from Burrow, then Burrow called for the foul. Well, if you're looking for an MVP of this game, Elmer Bennett. Uh, he, has, he really has stepped it up with some big shots. You could throw a blanket over the country, can't you? Mm -hmm. This tournament, you mentioned all four teams very evenly matched. NCAA, you've seen some wild finishes. And anybody has a shot, I think, this weekend. Mm -hmm. While we have the benefit of your expertise, would you like to go out on a limb and make a prediction, or would you like to hedge? I think I'll enjoy the game. <laughs> they don't call you the governor for nothing. <laughs> oh, just sit and enjoy them. Bennett enjoying the view from the foul line as it falls in for him. 29 for Elmer Bennett. He came in averaging just under 16 points per game. The lead is two for Virginia with 142 to play. And he set that three-point record this year beating Joe Frederick, who's a pretty good jump shooter for Digger. Adding to it this evening. He remains perfect from the line. 30 points for Bennett. It's a one-point game with 138 to play. See where he's catching it all the time. Now he's got to use the bounce. Stiff. Oh, smooth. Well, when you need him, he's there. He is. And Billy Taylor just doing a marvelous job defending him. 
It's tough. He had him on the right side, too. Still able to make it. That was the first bucket of the half for Stiff. He has 17 points. Bennett launched a long three, tracked down by Ellis. Very lucky, huh? Mm -hmm. In with a pretty good D in a hurry. Virginia by three with one minute to play in the NIT championship game. What a great final four this has been. Timeout called by the Fighting Irish. They'll have 31 seconds left on the shot clock when we return to Madison Square Garden in New York. For the Fergusons, just going to the store can be quite an adventure. incredibly civilized Ford Explorer. The overwhelming choice of explorers everywhere. What if you left all your worries behind? You grab the family, your skis, maybe a picnic lunch. What you'd have is freedom. Introducing the Freedom Machines from sea -Doo. For your nearest Sea Dew watercraft dealer, check your local yellow pages or call toll free 1 800 882 2900. Virginia leads by three. Notre Dame now with just one timeout remaining. They'll have the ball with 56.2 seconds left. Virginia with all three timeouts left. Virginia in a two shot situation. As actually, that was reversed. Virginia will be shooting a one and one. As Notre Dame has committed eight fouls in this half, while the Cavaliers have committed ten. Notre Dame will shoot two with every Virginia foul the rest of the way. They, they really don't need the three unless it's an inside out one at the end. You just want to score. Length of the game with a quick giveaway. Bennett for three to tie it off the mark. How about Ellis high into the air and he threw it out of bounds off a Cavalier. I believe it was Stiff who hit the deck in the corner. Well, they let them go after that one, didn't they? Mm -hmm. And Stiff upset because he knew that could have been a clincher, that rebound. Mm. Nice little set play to get that jumper. The shot clock is off. Sweet for three. No good. Ellis, the offensive rebound. It bounced in. It's a one-point game. Taylor on stiff. Notre Dame needs to foul. Virginia can run the timeout. Yeah, they're not giving one. Got to give it. And Sweet wow. finally fouls stiff. Should have been down, done down in the corner mm -hmm. on the first pass. Stiff against Florida State, if you'll remember, had a chance to do some damage with some free throws and came up empty. Now the key for Notre Dame is rebounding. How they handle if the missed free throw occurs and how they want to utilize the floor. Who do they want to take the shot if the two are made? Mm -hmm. They did not want to foul Stiff, an excellent free throw shooter at 81 percent. Three for four tonight. 17 points in the game for Bryant. Virginia by two with 15.1 left. And that should silence any critics who were upset that he missed those free throws against Florida State at home. He's cool, calm, and as we both noted the other night, a class act on and off mm -hmm. the floor. A valuable individual for any protein. Look at that stroke. Good for you. And Virginia calls timeout, leaving the Cavs with two. John McLeod will have one last chance to tie it with a three-pointer when we come back. There's been a homicide on Indian land. He's an FBI agent. What's my cover? Sent to solve a murder. No cover. You're going in there as who you are, an American Indian federal officer. But now... Drop the question, stick to the assignment, okay? 
He must follow his heart. You gotta listen to the trees, Haas. To find the truth. The owl is a messenger. It means somebody's gonna die. Thunderheart, rated R. Starts Friday at a theater near you. Four trucks, the best never rest. When we made the best built, best selling Ford full size pickup more stylish, we also made it a more comfortable place for people. Why did we make Explorer so spacious? Because that's what people need. Ford redefined the word truck. But we didn't forget who made us number one. More people are driving the best-built, best-selling American trucks than ever before. Virginia with a three-point lead in the NIT championship game with 15 seconds left. Notre Dame obviously setting up for a three-point attempt. Well, you like to go inside and kick it back out. You don't have that kind of time. I think you need some dribble drive, penetration, and then the kickback to Sweeter Bennett. You mentioned to me Ellis has taken them, Billy Taylor's taken a few, so they'll be on the perimeter. Here's a position, you know, the Valvano theory of give the foul, and early on I wouldn't agree with them, but in recent games I've seen where it's effective. Don't let them beat you with the three. A lot of people say that, but you very rarely see teams do it with a three-point lead. Bennett shoots the three. Go! Well, maybe they should have fouled him. 33 points for Elmer Bennett. What a way to close out his Notre Dame career. We're tied at 66. Virginia has 2.8 left, and I think some time ran off the clock, Bill, after, after the they had signaled for a timeout. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if perhaps they put some time back on the clock. John McLeod had inserted Brooks Boyer, who's another guy that's got that picture-perfect jump shot. So he had on the perimeter some pretty good performers, but there's a case. A lot of guys don't like to give it up, and just the other night in a net basketball game, Tim Hardaway could have been fouled. Instead, he made a three to put it in overtime. And right here, trying not to foul on the three, they end up with it all knotted up. Big time goal. <laughs> they have put time back on the clock. Two point eight seconds a moment ago now 3.8 seconds on the clock and that's a big difference it sure is because now you can go to half court with a pass and not take much time off and get sent for another timeout and then run your play uh. <laughs> oh, what a big goal by him now you got to be careful of your pass. Jeffrey can see the floor. Russell up on the basketball. I hope I never read another article or another quote from somebody involved in this sport that says do away with the NIT. <laughs> How much fun have we had here the last three nights? A great, great games. And Parker's got to get freeze a little bigger, and they force him to cause call a timeout. Oh, they had Malik Russell at six seven defending the inbound pass. Now one timeout remaining for each side. As Ted Jeffries trying to inbound. 66-66 the score. 3.8 seconds remaining. Does this remind you of Kentucky Duke? Mm -hmm. The ball on the end line? Mm -hmm. I think that's why John McLeod defending the inbound pass. <laughs> oh, goodness. And what the problem if, if our numbers are correct. Cavaliers, no that timeouts. That has been corrected. I said a second ago, one and one, but we were missing four. And now uh, the problem is finding people free, but this is just. Well, we're looking at the clock. Another see case. when they called the timeout. There you see the timeout four. at four. Well, close enough. Mm -hmm. They put so it to 3.8. 3.8 is certainly fair. It ran all the way down to 2.8 before the clock actually stopped. Now the difficulty is finding somebody, no timeouts left. You get a five second kind of a situation here. If they defend real well, Notre Dame could very well get the ball 
down underneath. So you've got to come up with stuff that you've done before. One of the assistants, Dennis Wolf, up to check with the officials on can he run the floor. <laughs> oh, a nice way to finish the NIT. Potential buzzer beater in overtime. Jeffries to inbound. Again, it's Russell right in his face. He is not the foul if you're Notre Dame on the catch. You've got to tip it away just like a defensive halfback. In the stiff, guarded by Taylor. He has time. That's a three. No good. No basket. Parker with the follow, but it came after the horn. And the NIT championship game is going to overtime. Pretty darn good shot, though. He turned that corner using guile. The little right hand not extending it. And a, if he shot it a second sooner, they would have had a follow-up, huh? Mm -hmm. Second or a couple of tenths. And right there, the right hand cupped, got him in position, and you just don't want to foul. And a fraction too late, huh? We were tied at halftime, and we're tied at the end of regulation. 66-66, back for the overtime in a moment. One of the most technologically advanced, most rigorously tested fluids on Earth, relentlessly measured for maximum protection against the friction, the wear and tear, the heat and stress of today's engines. It is today's Quaker State. In Europe, in Japan, in America, Quaker State quality has passed the most demanding tests automakers can throw at it. At Quaker State, we don't just say we're tough, we're tested tough. The big Q is one tough motor oil. Gillette presents Sensor, the system, the technology that will change the way you shave forever. Sensor, twin blades set on springs to read your face and respond. Independent suspension to sense and adjust to every curve of your face. No other razor comes close. Gillette Sensor, for the best shave a man can get. Well, for Virginia and Notre Dame, the season does not want to end. They're heading into overtime in the NIT championship game. Sean McDonald with Bill Raftery, happy to have you with us. John McLeod and Jeff Jones, just so happy to be in this event. They were disappointed, obviously, not to be in the NCAA field. Both Virginia and Notre Dame were on the bubble. And I think they've proven this, that they the, were worthy of serious consideration for that event. It, it's been terrific in the sense of competition, mm -hmm. going after one another, and taking away the style of play that the other desires. Ellis won the tip. Back to Bennett. Elmer Bennett, the hero, with 33 points. Four three-pointers, including the game tire with under four seconds to go. Guards are going to have to stop one another. That's been the problem. Either end. It's been an interesting match, Alexander and Bennett. Bennett. In and out. Battle for the rebound. Stiff had a hand on it. And a foul call. Alexander finally corralled it. And I believe it was Elmer Bennett who was called for the foul. Now it's on Billy Taylor. His third. And that is the tenth mm -hmm. team foul now. So it'll be a two-shot opportunity for both sides the rest of the way. Each team given one additional timeout in overtime, so Notre Dame has two, and Virginia one. Corey Alexander. Now ringing the bell early sets a little tone on occasion. Now you, if you're Jeff Jones, looking for a good defensive stance and puts a little pressure on the offense for John McLeod as to who should get it in a position to knock it down. 19 points and six assists for Corey Alexander tonight. Virginia back up by two. But Jeffries gives him some effort out there. Great communication, both ends, identifying the scores and helping or assisting your teammate. Burrow with Ellis taking away that duck in. 13 on the shot clock. Double. 
or triple. Made him kill the dribble. Bennett for three. Taylor the offensive rebound. And the follow by Ellis. Burrow winds up with it, and Burrow was the man who denied Taylor Ooh. underneath. Some good attempts, unable to convert. Oliver through the trees, no basket. No basket, foul called during the drive. Coming up on SportsCenter, we'll have the story of Roly Massimino's apparent departure to, rather now, official departure we are told to UNLV Shaquille O'Neal is heading to the pros ESPN has learned and we'll have an update on the NHL strike three games canceled the NHL tonight Oliver has a fall off it's still a two-point lead for Jeff Jones and the Virginia Cavaliers how about Roley at UNLV well it'd be a different the running rebels mm -hmm to the rebels with a pause. Yes, although Roley is sensitive uh, <laughs> to the notion that his uh, has been a slow down team at Villanova over the years. Well, he can, he can really play anyway. Mm -hmm. Over the years, adjustments in the style. Well, if you're looking for a coach who graduates players and runs the program mm -hmm. the right way, he oh, great certainly image. above reproach. And maybe a refresher for him too. You know, you're at a place a long time and your ties don't look as good to the alums or your hairdo isn't in sync. And the same with your attitude. Let Ellis touch. Become very guard oriented of late, but Burrow continues to howl. Look at this effort. <laughs> Junior Burrow diving to the floor to knock it out of bounds. 12 seconds on the shot clock for Notre Dame. Given it all, and, and it's also pressure on the passer down in that post area. Harassing, making it a tougher angle to deliver, but he's always been there, Junior. Shot clock down to seven as they retreat to midcourt. Bennett, oh, Jeff Jones, <laughs> taking a walk. He didn't like the call against Corey Alexander, his fourth personal. Just retreating, and Bennett losing the balance, put the question in the official's whistle. It looked like he lost his balance because he was leaning into Alexander, who kept Falling away, getting out of the way. Bennett, a perfect nine for nine from the line. Ordinarily just a 69% free throw shooter. He has 33 points. Well, you could finish evening prayers by the time he shoots. Yes, you could. Supposed to have 10 seconds, I wonder if they're counting. Or somebody religious could. Mm -hmm. And that's that little replay, that little bump and drag. The second one short. First miss from line for Bennett. Virginia by two with 2.50 to play in overtime. And a simple thing, taking the free throw shooter by Alexander, set this shot up. A miss by Alexander, the rebound by Ellis. Two to tie, three for the lead for the Irish. I now they get Burrow. What's tough is that's been going on all game where you get on the high side in three quarter and you've got to continue letting that happen. They felt he was a little overbearing using the upper body strength in an overzealous fashion, but he forces him back. And now the high side, and you see that arm dipping down, and you know, low post D, there's gotta be body contact. Ellis, he's five for five from the line. 17 points for Lafonso. And checking John out, he's got Fran McCaffrey next to him, who the head, was a head coach at Lehigh, very successful one too. And John's got a paper, and they just check things that they like to run at certain points of the game, I'm sure, or what Virginia does, more importantly. We're tied at 69, midway through the first overtime. Notre Dame now 19 of 23. Oh, oh, that was gorgeous, Sean. Oh. Tower called for the foul, his fourth. 
What do you think? I, I did not think it was a good call live. Oh, great block and the jump stop and then the elevation and you're always gonna have the knees clanging. Let the big guys finish the sequence. The, the, the official who called it is the outside official. With the man on the sideline and the man underneath the bucket, much closer and with a better angle to the play, not screened off by the body of Stiff, as it appeared the outside official was. Like back off a little, right? Well, the whistle was blowing before the play is even mm -hmm. made. It was almost an anticipatory. And they've whistle. done it. They've done a nice job, I think, during the course of the game. We're off the even numbers, 20 points for Stiff. You're certainly entitled to your opinion. <laughs> Remaining in overtime. 25 on the shot clock. The Irish been very patient throughout the game. They're half to an offense. Look at this. Oh, is that gorgeous? Sweet the miss. Tower called for clearing out, and that is his fifth as he knocked Bryant Smith past the photographers into the front row. And that's not an easy task. And who was in the middle of it? Ted Jeffries. Well, remember, the fourth one was on a bad call a moment ago. Mm -hmm. Puts them in a hole, but Ted Jeffries checked out, and then the bang by Tower on Stith. <laughs> Tower to the bench with 147 left in overtime. And with Virginia leading by one, he has been replaced by John Ross. And his contributions, that high post screen they use for him, his banging of the glass, and his defensive wizardry, particularly rebounding off missed shots. Brian Stiff, right on his season average of 20. The lead is two. And you have that big body that Tower has, and the opponent misses. Doesn't give him that second effort, so Ross has got to step up for him. Stiff now 8 for 10 from the line tonight. Virginia by 3, 147 remaining. And they have that hammer with that odd point. Neither team has a field goal in overtime. All the scoring has come from the free throw line. Bennett looking to blow by and create. This is their offense at the end of the half for regulation. They, got the, they don't have a guy that can make that there. John Ross yeah. did not want to put up a shot. Taylor will. Ellis going to hand on the rebound, but it's tracked down by Oliver. Virginia with a three-on-one break. Oliver lays it in. The Cavaliers by five. We're down to a minute left in overtime. Notre Dame calls timeout. Virginia 74, Notre Dame 69. We'll be right back. Uh-oh. Looks like we could be stuck here for a while. I'll be right back. When you need a battery... There's no better place than Advance Auto Parts. The prices are great. Installation is free and we'll even recycle your old battery. And of course, there's our legendary friendly service. Okay, folks, all set. Guess this was your lucky day. We'll be here late again tonight at Richmond Ford Spring Tent Sale. When the tent goes up, the prices come down, and they look something like this. Ford Tempo GL four-door for only $99.99, a gigantic savings of $2,600. Or this new 92 Escort loaded for only $72.30. How about this Ranger Sport? You not only get free box rails, you get the lowest bottom line. Free hot dogs and Pepsi. Bring the family to Richmond Ford, 4600 West Broad. Your All-American can handle a lot of things. Aggressive defensive rebound leading to the fast break, and Oliver got away with one here. Sean McDonough, he had Stiff wide open. It's fortunate he didn't charge or miss the goal. 
that is one of the prettier kisses for the Cavs this year. But uh, he had the big fella up front, didn't he? Well, a minute to go. Notre Dame down by five, or three's a must now. Two trips. I don't think you have, I think I can just get the two. Well, there's your answer. Bennett off the mark. He hustles into the corner after it. Pulled off his own man. Good call. Yes, he did. But that's the problem with going to the three first. Everybody thinks you are. Go get the deuce, you know, hopefully maybe get the foul. That's the other problem. And they convert. But 53, plenty of time. Now the officials conferring. And they have plenty of help. Virginia will keep it. And that was the right call. John McLeod. Oh. oh. It, it did, did hit, hit first yes, and then that's ricocheted. Right. Stiff. Virginia has it in the right hand. Oh, Ellis late. But that's what you got to do. Mm -hmm. And well, four seconds, five seconds. But that looping pass so tantalizing for a pressing team to step in. You're going the other way. Brooks Boyer getting the call here. Pretty good outside shooter. There's folks down in Florida visiting their grandchild. Couldn't get up here, but he can drill it. That's what they need at this point in the game. The foul was on LaFonso Ellis, his fourth. As you look at Boyer, the sophomore from Jackson, Michigan, replacing Malik Russell. Corey Alexander, the free throw shooter, he has 19 points tonight. He's a 68% free throw shooter for the year. The perfect from the line this evening. Virginia's awfully tough when their two guards play like they did this second half. Coming up. On Sports Center, the story of Rolly Massimino's departure from Villanova to UNLV. ESPN is reporting that Shaquille O'Neal will head to the pros. And more details on the NHL strike. UVA on a 7 0 run. They've opened up a lead of seven. And the foul on the drive committed by Cornell Parker. Now, if you're Virginia, Sean, you don't want to foul and stop the clock, but that's the play I thought they should have done the last trip to get it to 71 from 69 and then play that good D, try and come up with the steal. And now they're going to need something out of their pressure. Let's go. Let's go, Malik Russell back in, as you saw. Notre Dame without a field goal in overtime. 0 for 6 from the floor. They've only scored three points off the line here in the extra session. And here is Elmer Bennett. With 39 and a half seconds remaining, Virginia 76, Notre Dame 69. Bennett looking for his 35th point. It's a pretty impressive number. Mm -hmm. They have to foul quickly. Ellis cannot afford to commit the foul with four. They should maybe move him back, but then you eliminate that anticipation individual. He's on the ball. He's the 12 for 13 from the line. He's the first trapper. They get it in to Oliver, and he's grabbed by Sweet. Three fouls on Damon Sweet. Clock stopped with just under 38 seconds remaining. John McLeod continues to substitute for offense and defense. They're heading on offense, so here's Brooks Boyer back in, and Malik Russell takes a seat. Well, you got to rely on the inability to convert in a free throw line now. Mm -hmm. And you've got to conversely come down and bang them home as quick, the quick hitters that you de said. But, uh, well, this is uh, the Valvano theory again when you think of that great win over Houston. Mm -hmm. Stop the clock, get you the basketball. Virginia by six as Oliver made one of two. Ford to be very patient now. Bennett underneath nicely. Taylor uh -oh. had a layup and passed it off. All he had to do is go up strong. Well, you rely on your A player, and when you should do it yourself, you've been so committed all year long that you try that extra pass. 
We mentioned earlier the Notre Dame coaches said today they were trying to encourage Taylor to look at the basketball. He had to look at it there. Might have had a chance to draw a foul as well with the defender underneath. No shot. Yeah, that's right. Should have gone up strong. Russell called for a foul as he hit Alexander. Two fouls on Malik Russell. 21 and a half seconds remaining. Virginia with a chance to build on a six point lead. A lot of heart shown on both ends. And you see a classy guy. Sometimes you feel it setting in. He has really enjoyed his return to the college game after 18 years in the NBA. What a perfect match, John McLeod and Notre Dame. And now they got to go out and get it going again, too. Get some players. And interesting to see what they do down the road, whether they stay that independent or get into a conference. And they play a lot of those teams in that great Midwest. And Oliver missed two, then a foul on the rebound action. Some rumors they won't play those teams twice. I think they played DePaul and Marquette and Dayton just to change their scheduling around a little bit. A truly terrific performer, LaFonso, mm -hmm. showing his innate ability. Ellis to the line as Jeffries is fouled out with three points, but that doesn't tell much of what he did tonight on defense. Well, the recruits now can call you. You can't call them. There's certain periods uh, that uh, you're, they're permitted to call you, and you can't pay attention to them. And uh, I think the Virginia kids will start calling in now. Mm -hmm. Those, because it's been a quiet year, and next year starting, they've all started with juniors. And this can help them. Uh, you know, Jeff establishing himself as a championship coach, and that's important to a lot of kids and a lot of high school coaches too they want to be sure that their kid has a chance to go with a guy that's one got to stop it right away no choices now no whistle and finally it's called on ellis and he is fouled out but they are hanging right there i'm not giving up on them mm -hmm. uh, got to make the free throws well jeff jones can't be happy that a couple of times with the fairly comfortable lead here in overtime his players have committed fouls that have stopped the clock and given Notre Dame the opportunity and a great career at Notre Dame is coming to an end LaFonso Ellis in his last game for the Fighting Irish with 20 points and 11 rebounds giving him 56 double doubles in 96 career games for Notre Dame some great numbers there's Jeff Nix alongside him I think a thrill for him to finish and the academic end, too, that he's able to overcome a couple of tough years and get it done and get a year of basketball under his belt without those distractions. A great performance by Ellis, but we have been informed that Brian Stith of Virginia has been selected the most valuable player at the NIT. And a good choice. He has some of the quietest nights. <laughs> He mentioned 20 points before, and it didn't seem like it. He had been quiet in the second half. But a leader, contributor all the time. We've seen two nice professional prospects. Mm -hmm. Stith and Ellis. Both with a chance to go in the top 15 picks, as Bill mentioned earlier. The lead is six after the two free throws by Oliver. 15 seconds to play. They need a three. That's a long NBA three. Oh, God. Elmer Bennett. With a career high now, 39 points, surpassing the 38 that he had against Detroit Mercy earlier this year. Who gave that MVP away so early? <laughs> I tried to give it to Elmer earlier, but they wouldn't listen. <laughs> oh, that was deep. A timeout with 10.3 seconds left. Don't crowd the Cavaliers just yet. Hey, man. Want to taste of something make you feel good? Leave me alone. Try it off. You don't know what you're missing. A little crack won't hurt you. It'll make me a cracker. Won't cost you nothing. This one's on me. Absolutely free. I said no, man. Good job, son. That's just what you do if that ever happens. Hey, Dad. Deal with your kids. Tell them the truth about drugs. It could be the most important role you ever play. Like how you handle yourself. Major League Baseball is in your face on ESPN. 
with America's Game of the Week, Sunday Night Baseball, plus single games on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night, and a Friday night doubleheader. Got it! Opening day is Monday, as the Blue Jays meet the Tigers, the Giants battle the Dodgers, and the Mets take on the Cardinals. An opening day triple-header, Monday at 1 Eastern, live on ESPN. Just over 10 seconds remaining in the first overtime. The NIT championship game. Virginia will have the ball out of bounds with a three-point lead. And on the inbounds now, you've got to think steal. Stop the clock immediately. Cause the five-second turnover. You know exactly what Virginia's been trying to do, and you don't have an option at this point in the game as to who to give the ball to. They've got the guards down, the forwards deep. Virginia. Burrow, the inbound, into Stiff. And he is fouled immediately by Taylor. Did you see Stith grab the pass and lock the vice? And to give it up on a little tap on the arm, which can happen. For those of you tuning in expecting to see Sports Center, we'll be joining Sports Center as soon as this game is over. Those are the subjects, among others, that the gentleman will be covering. What a great name for the Vegas coach, huh? <laughs> Roll. Uh, Dick Rosenthal was in the background on that shot of Ellis. You mentioned his name out of the record books mm -hmm. for the most fouls committed in a career as Keith Tower surpassed him. A big free throw by Stiff. That puts Virginia up by four. 23 in the game for Stiff, including 9 of 11 from the line. It's five. And Notre Dame has to score very quickly because they don't have a timeout. They cannot stop it after a goal. Bennett launches one. It didn't go in. Virginia is the NIT champion in 1992. It was a great event. Virginia wins the NIT for the second time. They were also the champs in 1980, and what started out as a dismal season ended still very brightly for Notre Dame. Great, great year for both clubs when you think of it. Uh, Virginia, solid day, and the guard stepped up to help Stent. Ellis, wonderful career. Enjoyable being with you, Sean. Always great being with you, Bill. The final score, 81-76, Virginia in overtime. For Bill Raftery, Sean McDonough saying so long. Stay tuned for Sports Center. ESPN's College Basketball has been brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By 7-Up, the Uncola, and your local 7-Up bottler. And by Gillette and the revolutionary Gillette Sensor Shaving System. Gillette, the best a man can get. Big City. Coming up next on Sports Center, the city of Las Vegas has a coach with nine letters in its last name, and it doesn't begin with T. Shaq's summer vacation may end at the NBA lottery. Fighting on the ice is a familiar sight. Fighting off the ice is something new. Welcome to the first day of the first NHL strike. What a wonderful uh, 75th anniversary, huh? The Bulls, one win away from staying at home for the playoffs. While Bird does his best to increase play